G'day, I'm Michael Thompson. I'm a big fix technical advisor for Asia Pacific based out of Melbourne, Australia. Down the bottom is my QR code, which you can scan to get in contact with me via LinkedIn. Today I'm going to show you how you can use Big Fix to run existing scripts that you have in your environment. Now almost every organization has support staff that have existing content that they use in some shape or form to assist in the management of their systems or infrastructure or applications on a day-to-day -day basis. Now with the power of Big Fix as the orchestrator of these scripts, given its level of privilege that it has on these systems, as you no doubt know, Big Fix agent runs as local system on Windows or as root credentials on other OSs, or even we can use the run as command to run as a specific user context on particular um, systems if we want. But we can import these scripts in pretty much any programming language and then invoke them on the agents. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can use scripts where we already have a native interpreter on the system. As an example, you know, PowerShell on Windows systems or Perl on Linux systems. You could also deliver down an interpreter with the script if you wanted to using the power of Big Fix, but that's something I'm not going to be covering in this video. Now, by bringing these scripts into Big Fix, we then have controls over how and when these are run, as well as being able to run them simultaneously across systems in parallel. Let me show you how easy it is. Okay, first I'm going to create a task for the Perl script. So being a good big sixer, I'm going to put that in a custom site. Never put anything in the master action site, see if you can avoid it. Apart from computer groups, we'll put some relevance in. Now, we go to our action script. I've got a script here for Perl already. It's a very simple Perl script. It's just printing hello world to stand it out. So, first of all, we'll decide what we're going to call our script, our Perl script. I'll just call it hello.pl and I'll do a delete command in case we want to run this multiple times on a system and that way it will delete the file if it's there. If it won't, if it's not there, it won't care. We'll do our create file until command. And this is where we actually put our script in. So we can just have a tag here that it's looking for to signify that it's reached the end of the file. I usually like to put something like that in. We'll paste our script in. We'll yell stop and then what we need to do next is move our file so when we move our file it's the actual create file that it does under the covers is underscore underscore create file that's what it is and then we'll move that to hello.pl now there's just another couple of things that we need to do at a linux level first of all we have to specify to Chmod the file, so we'll make it so it's executable. And nextly, or lastly, we'll run our shell command. We'll put a minus C switch, and then we'll run our hello.pl. And since it's going to stand it out and we're not going to see it, I'll redirect this to a file so that we can have a look later. So we'll call it my hello.pl. Whoops, uh, no text. And there we go. It's as simple as that to create a script. We just again put it between the tags that it's looking for using the create file and tool command. And then we move it, change the permissions, and invoke it. So we'll click OK to that. I will also create a PowerShell script. Now, once again, make sure that we put it in our custom site. We'll pop some relevance on it. And we need to delete the file in case it exists already. And we'll call it my message.ps1. Once again, we do a create file until command. 
this case I'll just choose end, that's what most people do. Now I'll copy my command across. Now, if you have a PowerShell script that has curly braces in, you'll need to escape the opening curly brace with another opening curly brace. That's because they're also used by Big Fix language. So even though we're trying to feed a file in with the create file command, you can actually feed parameters in there as well. So we need to escape those by using that. So once we're finished, we once again use the move command. We move underscore underscore create file and we move that to our file name. Now, this particular command here requires a parameter be passed in, which is the actual message. So, what we can do in this instance is we can prompt the user for a message by using action parameter query. We'll give the parameter the name message text. Actually, we'll use my message text. Now all we need to do is run the command. So we use our wait hidden command. Now we need to call our interpreter. So in this instance, it's powershell.exe. We're going to pass some switches through. So we want to do, oops, execution policy. And we want to tell it to bypass. And we want to give it the file switch and give it our file, which is my msg.ps1. And then we want to pass it our parameter. Which is my message text. And there we go. Oh, our Perl one's already evaluated. So let's take action on that. So we'll go to our Supergate box here. We've got a command prompt on there. Yep. I'm in temp already. Gee, that was quick. There you go. Looks like the time's out. Time's out compared to my big fix server by a couple of minutes. There you go, that was super quick. Just hasn't reported back its results. I'll just wait for this to update. Okay, now we'll take the action give our message as we're prompted, as you can see. And we'll target my big fix server here. And we'll just have a look at the directory and see that our little message gets created. So here's our basic message log. What's running in the background? Hasn't reported back. There you go. Just so you know, big fix rocks. And it should hopefully come back with completed in a second, but you get the idea. So as you can see, it's relatively simple task to convert existing scripts that you have into a fixlet or a task with big fix. Once you do this, you can then have greater control over how you actually run a job. You can also think of it as like a, a cron job for your system, if you like. You can set a policy for when your jobs run if you want, and you can also you know, have some efficiencies around when it executes. You can also control um, 
what systems it runs on. You can use things like computer groups, or you could use custom settings, custom client settings. And obviously you've got the power of relevance applicability as well. So you can even set things down as a policy. So bringing this capability into BigFix gives you greater control, automation and efficiencies, and then frees your IT support people to focus on more meaningful tasks to your organization. So that's all there is for today's content. Here are some helpful resources for you. First of all, we have bigfix.com, which is your landing page to find out further information on product offerings, schedule a demo. Next is support.bigfix.com, which provides you with product documentation and access to create support tickets, as well as details on events and webinars. And finally, forum.bigfix.com, where you can interact with other like-minded BitThis enthusiasts and ask questions. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the video useful and I wish you continued success on your Big Fix journey. If you enjoyed this video, please click like. If you'd like to be notified when there's updates, please subscribe to the Big Fix TA YouTube channel. The link is below.